Uh, chapter 6, we're talking about thermochemistry. We're going to talk about um, measuring the change in internal energy for chemical reactions. So we just learned about what's called pressure volume work, where um, a gas is expanding against a pressure. So the system, the part of the universe that we're interested in, and the surroundings, everything else, exchange energy through heat and work. So we've talked about heat. Um, we symbolize that as Q. Heat can be quantified as the mass times the specific heat capacity times the change in temperature. Heat can flow from the system to the surroundings or from the surroundings to the system. Work, pressure volume work, is negative the pressure times the change in volume. And that, syst that work can be done on the system, or it can be done on the surroundings. And so energy can transfer back and forth in that way. Now, the change in internal energy, delta E, is a measure of all the energy that is exchanged, both heat and work. So we can say that delta E, the change in internal energy of the system, is equal to Q plus W. If there's no change in volume, then W is going to be equal to zero, right? If we keep the volume the same, W is zero. And so at constant volume, the, in, the change in internal energy of the reaction is equal to the heat that's transferred. And we put a subscript V on this to indicate that's at constant volume. So Q at constant volume is the same as the internal energy change. Um, we can't really look at the change in the temperature of an individual reaction because it's just, it's just very, very difficult. So what we do is we measure the change in the surroundings. And we can do this using what's called a bomb calorimeter. So this is very insulated and very controlled. Now, we've seen this word before because we did an experiment last week with a calorimeter, but that was not this type of calorimeter. But we did see um, um, equations like this. The heat transfer for the system is going to be equal to but opposite in sign to the heat transfer for the surroundings. Right? If the system loses heat, the surroundings gains the same amount of heat. And here in this type of experiment, the bomb calorimeter is the surroundings. And so Q for the system is equal to opposite in sign, the, the Q for the calorimeter. And when we talk about calorimetry, that's just a technique used to measure heat of reaction by um, observing changes in temperatures in the surroundings. It's literally measuring calories, calorimetry, so measuring calories. So here's an illustration of a bomb calorimeter. That's a little fancier than what we use, Tom. We had two styrofoam cups and a piece of cardboard. Um, so in the bomb calorimeter, I mean, this is one of the ways they determine uh, the calorie content of food, is they combust it. So this is the bomb, and it doesn't explode. But we have this small, airtight uh, container in here and this is where the sample is put, and there's oxygen in here, and there's usually some sort of a spark comes from the ignition wire to start the combustion. This is sealed, so the volume cannot change. So you have a combustion reaction occurring, and gases are being generated and stuff, but the volume can't change, and so W is zero. The work done is zero, and the change in internal energy is just equal to the heat transfer. So this is going to get hot if you're burning stuff. And then around it, we've got this large calorimeter full of water. It's, it's well insulated, so we don't have to worry about heat loss to outside of the, thermom of the calorimeter. And so using the thermometer, we've got a fancy stirring mechanism here so that we don't have to stir it with the thermometer and all sorts of stuff like that. We can measure the temperature change. 
the heat transferred, the heat lost by this combustion reaction is transferred to the calorimeter and we can measure it in the temperature increase. So Q for the calorimeter is this calorimeter constant, which is just a, a heat capacity, times the change in temperature. Because you're using the same calorimeter all the time, you don't have to worry about um, measuring this every time. So Q cal is equal to Q reaction, but opposite in sign. Q reaction is equal to the change in internal energy for the reaction. So let's do an example. When 1.550 grams of liquid hexane undergoes combustion in a bomb calorimeter, the temperature rises from 25.87 to 38.13 degrees Celsius. Find delta E reaction in kilojoules per mole of hexane. The heat capacity of the bomb calorimeter determined in a separate experiment is 5.73 kilojoules per degree Celsius. Well, good strategy for problems like this is to just start by writing down these numbers and what they mean. So um, we have um, a mass of hexane, and that is 1.550 grams of hexane. And then we have a temperature change here rises from, so the initial temperature is the 25.87. And the final temperature is 38.13 degrees Celsius, and we're looking for delta E for the reaction. Well, what do we know that that equals? It's opposite in sign to Q for the calorimeter. Q for the calorimeter was um, C for the calorimeter times the change in temperature. Do you follow me there? Because I didn't write out every little detailed thing there. not even necks cracking as heads shake or not. Oh my goodness. They're dead. Maybe, no, maybe you're just zombies. So let's just review because I know it's early, right? Delta E for the reaction equals QV because the work is zero because the volume change was zero. QV is negative Q cal. Q for the calorimeter is equal to the heat capacity. It's not MC. M would be the mass of the calorimeter. C would be the specific heat capacity. We've combined those two together because we just measure C for the calorimeter and it's not changing times delta T. So I took this expression and stuck it in here, and that's why the negative sign is there. Any questions? Okay, let me erase all that. Um, and then we're given um, this number here, Heat capacity for the calorimeter, that's C cal, 5.73 kilojoules per degree Celsius. So here we have delta E reaction. We just need this number times the change in temperature, right? The change in temperature, well, let's just plug some things in here. 
So we've got C. And the change in temperature is going to be the final minus the initial. And I didn't plan this out very well. I'm going to put it way up here. Delta T is T final minus T initial. So that's the final 38.13, uh, 38.13 minus the 25.87, 12.26. degrees Celsius. So that's going to go in here, 12.26 degrees Celsius. What happens with the units? Always write the units in. If you have fractions in your units, write them vertically so that you see this is numerator, this is denominator. Do any of these units cancel out here? The degree Celsius, degree Celsius in the numerator and the denominator. And so then we're ending up with a unit of kilojoules. So delta E for the reaction is that 12.26 times 5.73, and it has a negative sign in front of it. So I'm getting minus 70.24. 9.8 kilojoules. And that would have three significant figures. Is that the answer to this question? No. It's a nice answer, right? And we expect this to be negative, or we should expect this to be negative, because an exothermic reaction Combustion is an exothermic reaction, right? It gives off heat. When you lose money from your wallet, that's a negative experience. Delta E is negative for an exothermic reaction. How can we put this into kilojoules per mole of hexane? This is the amount, oops, didn't mean to do that. This is the amount of energy that's released for this mass of hexane. Could we convert this mass to moles? Yeah. And if we want it per one mole, then we need to take this amount and divide by the number of moles that we actually have, and that'll get us kilojoules per mole. And it's this little tweak of requiring kilojoules per mole. This is the sort of tweak that we put into Chem 1A problems that makes you guys go crazy at home because you didn't do one like that in the example. Yeah, you gotta think. The units, though, will really help you. You have to get comfortable with units. How do we figure out the moles? Well, for one thing, I need some space in here. I don't have any room. I'll make some room. Well, we need the molar mass of hexane, right? They gave us a formula. So we've got six, yeah, writing with white, six times um, carbon plus, no, that would be benzene, 14 times hydrogen. eighty six point one seven two so eighty six point one seven two grams is equal to one mole and then hopefully you're getting in the habit of keeping track of your significant figures because of the uh, molar masses I choose chose to use this should have four okay so now I'm going to take my 1.550 grams of hexane. My units tell me what to do. I want moles on the top and grams on the bottom. It'll be one mole and 
86.172 on the bottom. 1.550 divided by 86.172. Zero point zero one seven. I should have four sig figs here. So one seven nine eight. There's my four, and I'm going to carry two extras. That many moles. That was the number of moles that were actually combusted in the experiment. That many moles, fraction of a mole, gave off this amount of energy. So if I take that amount of energy and divide by the number of moles, 0 0.01798, 73 moles, then I will end up with units requested. So minus three nine zero, excuse me, five point five, um, three sig figs, kilojoules per mole. How should I express that number with three sig figs? Scientific notation is best. Um, that would be three point nine one times ten to the third kilojoules per mole. Way down there in the corner. Any questions? You're still zombie.